rock. What's up, guys? What is this? This isn't a supermoto. What is he doing? Well, it is my birthday. And I am taking my dirt bike out for a ride. Talk to you in a sheet. I'm not wearing my dirt bike helmet right now, so that kind of sucks because it's hot, but I'm wearing my rock helmet so I can motor vlog for you guys on the YZ. Man, this is a different feeling. I haven't been on this bike in a while. The geometry is so different than my uh, DRZ. Man, this thing's still running like shit. Well, it's gonna have to be good enough for now, though. So, what I had put a thing out a while ago asking people, you know, hey, do you have any questions that you want to know, stuff you want to know about me, um, personal or about the bike or about riding or whatever, go ahead and ask them and I would do my best to answer them. And I got a few questions and one of the ones that stuck out in my mind right away because I thought it would be a good story was how I met my wife. Uh, that was kind of a cool story because I've been with my wife for a long time. Um, I've had a lot of friends whose wives have come and gone. You know, they got a divorce or, you know, what have you. I got friends that are still married, but they pretty much hate their wife and their wife pretty much hates them, which sucks. But meanwhile, my wife and I just keep taking on, having a groovy time. So, basically how it goes, I was 15, punk rocker guy, skater guy, and I'm friends with this guy Brian, who's kind of a wannabe skater, definitely not punk rock guy, more kind of mod, new wave guy, if you were around in the 80s and early 90s, you know what that means. And he calls me one day, and he's like, hey, you know, my girlfriend's coming up, she's bringing her friend. And I'm always down for getting hooked up. And he's like, oh, and her friend is 19, and likes to stop, drop, and roll, if you know what I mean. And I was, I don't think I'm going to go down there. I was, you know, I was a 15-year-old boy. I knew what the implication of she likes to stop, drop, and roll was. Yeah, I'm not going to go up there. Like... Yeah! A little turn around there. So I knew what the implication of likes to stop, drop, and roll was. Because, you know, 15-year-old boy, you want to do it too. Basically, it was a horny 19-year-old girl that was single, and she was his girlfriend's best friend. So that kind of automatically, you're in the money. Unless you really fuck it up, you're in the money. And by money, I don't mean money. I mean, well, you know what I mean. So, I leap at the opportunity. I hop on my skateboard, and I ride up to his house, and. I roll in the driveway, and first thing I see is him, I'm like, what's up, dude? Then I see his girlfriend. She's this short skater chick, kind of sort of brunette hair, really, really light brunette. You could almost still call it blondish, with, uh, you know, the skater girl bangs came down over one side of her face and her bangs were dyed blonde and I was instantly like somebody hit me in the stomach I was just like oh my god this is the hottest girl I've ever seen in my life 
And then, of course, I met the 19-year-old friend, and my penis immediately took over all thinking, and I was quite pleased to be set up with a horny 19-year-old redhead. You know, as a 15-year-old boy, there's multiple benefits to having a 19-year-old girlfriend. You know, not just the getting laid aspect, but the has a car, the is not in school, so don't have to put up with bull school bullshit, the is over 18, so doesn't have to answer to people, so you don't have to worry about, you know, her shit fucking up your shit. Um, plus, you know, of course at 19 she knows people that can get booze. And I, I knew some, but I didn't know many. So it was nice having another source of occasional alcohol. Although she was, she wasn't straight edge, but she was pretty straight laced. And I wasn't, I wasn't super party animal anyway. I'm starting to feel a little better here. Um, so I went out with her for, you know, a good long time, like eight months. Most of the time, it was myself and my girlfriend and uh, my friend Brian and his girlfriend, who was the one that, like I said, when I saw her, it was like somebody punched me in the stomach. And I was just like, the whole time they were going out, I was secretly like, holy fuck, holy fuck, holy fuck, his girlfriend's so awesome. As a matter of fact, my, my girlfriend figured out that I had a crush on her and used to kind of tease me about it. Which was awesome that she wasn't, like, jealous. So they eventually broke up, and I eventually broke up with, with my girlfriend. And I went out with other girls here and there over the coming years, and I always stayed friends with Brian's ex-girlfriend. Her name was Sonny. And there was always something different about how I felt about her. This is steeper than it looks, by the way. There was always something different about how I felt about her. Um, I couldn't really put my finger on it, but I kind of looked at her as kind of better than me. Because I was, you know, I was, all, the only thing I cared about in the world was skating, getting drunk, doing acid, and getting laid. And she was, you know, straight A student, straight edge, you know, no booze, no sex, certainly no drugs. And I was kind of like, you know, I'm this fuck up. So there's nothing she'd ever possibly want with me. And I just felt, nice little re kickstart there. Um, I just felt fortunate that she was even willing to be my friend. I didn't really even understand why she was willing to be my friend, but I wasn't going to question it. So, we stayed friends for a long time, years and years. I eventually moved away to Vegas. I stayed friends with her the whole time, talked to her on the phone a lot. Um, especially when I first moved there, because I didn't have a girlfriend, I didn't have any friends. So I was always calling her, pestering her, see what she was up to. And I didn't really... I don't think I consciously really knew how much I was into her yet. And I, I, I had a girlfriend then in Vegas, and that girl was pretty awesome. I ended up treating her like shit, because I was a fucked up... I was pretty mentally screwed up. Um, but... A little bit of almost error there. But while I was, while I was going out with this girl in Vegas, I was still really good friends with it, with uh, Sunny, and I kept in contact with her all the time. I think this road's pretty smooth. Um, yeah, you know, it was funny. The one Christmas, 
nobody was around and I had a Christmas tree. Cause I'm, I'm way into the holidays. And I, I was on the phone with her the whole time I'm setting up this fake Christmas tree. I think we were on the phone for like three or four hours. Uh, I talk a lot, which is probably one of the reasons why I'm decent at moto vlogging. I guess at one point she put the phone down and like went to help one of her other roommates and was gone for a couple minutes. And when she came back, I had just finished, I finished talking talk about what I was talking about maybe a couple seconds after she came back. And I, I guess she was gone for like a couple minutes. So that's kind of funny. Um, so yeah, moral of the story, I, was, I stayed close friends with her the whole time I lived in Vegas. Is muddy in here? Eh, not really. I moved home, I, I went to go in the army in Vegas and I got my GED because I had dropped out, because of course I had dropped out of high school. Um, you know, there were, I was never under any illusions that high school was going to be a successful thing for me, after about 8th grade anyway. Let's see here, where can I go from here? Um, so I moved back to Pennsylvania and I go to go in the army. and. I'm going in, it's a done deal, I'm going to go Army Reserves, and then when I get out of AIT, which is like, so you have basic training and then you have AIT. AIT is where you learn your job in the Army. Basic training is where you learn how to be a soldier. AIT is where you learn your whatever your job in the military is going to be. So I was going to go regular army after basic, after uh, AIT. Turns out that that's something that's almost impossible to make happen until your contract's up. But it was irrelevant because before I was going to leave, I had no intention of ever coming back to Pennsylvania. So I wanted to say goodbye to this person who had been my most significant and most important friend for years and years and years was Sonny. So I called her, I'm like, let's go, let's just go get a burger at McDonald's or something and go see a movie and we did and where is, there's a trail up here, I don't remember where it is. Anyway, so there was something very different, some very different vibe when I picked her up that night and the whole time we were out, I was like, trying to find a way to hold her hand, but totally freaking out, because again, I'm like, you know, oh, hey, I'm a, I'm a screw-up, and this girl's like, graduated with honors, and is in college, you know, I, I'm still on the, I don't, I'm not good enough to get a girl like this track with her. At least that's, that was my perception of it. So, we go, out to the movie and like I said there's this whole weird vibe and I didn't know at the time but she was feeling it too and uh, you know it's really freaking me out because years earlier a couple years after I'd been living in Vegas I had this dream and in the dream Sonny and I were together like we were, we were going out and it was like the most awesome feeling in the world and then when I woke up and I realized that it wasn't real, I was really, really, really upset. Like, it ruined my day. Man, this is harder than I remember it. I remember doing this. And I remember this section. I don't know if it looks as rocky as it is here. Man, it's rocking. I gotta adjust this shifter, man. The shifter on this bike is up so high. This bike just feels so small to me right now. Um. So yeah, the, we go out and 
I, I couldn't bear to take her straight home after a movie. So we were cruising around and, you know, I slyly had popped a tape of her favorite band into my uh, tape deck in my car. I remember this was before, this was before everybody had CD players in their car. And most people had CD players, but mo a lot of people, well, no, a lot of people had CD players, most still had tapes. Anyway, so I pop in uh, a Soundgarden tape, because that was her favorite band. And we're driving around at night, just like cruising the back roads in rural Pennsylvania. Listening to Soundgarden. And I'm like trying to, trying to grow the balls to make a move. But I, you know, I can't, because I'm like, man, I don't want to screw up what I have with this girl you know, and lose her as a friend. Anyway, so the night kind of comes to an end. I go to drop her off at her house, and this is going to be the last time I see her, maybe forever. And I, I pull up to her driveway, and I shut the car off, and she leans across the car and kisses me. Uh, it's crazy. So I, I've come down this before, coming this fast, and it felt so fast to me before. Like, I thought I was doing, like, 70 before when I would go that way. And now I'm, like, definitely don't feel like I'm doing 70. <laughs> that was probably maybe 40. Um, anyway, she leans across the car and kisses me. And my mind is blown at this point. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Because that dream in Vegas, the one thing I realized out of that dream was that I was completely and totally in love with her. And, you know, so I was like, oh my god, I've been, I, and I just, I remember I, after she kissed me, I leaned back in the seat and I went seven years. Because I had been friends with her for seven years and been so into her for, for seven years at that point. You know, I thought she was like the raddest thing ever the, the whole time I'd known her. You know, so the fact that she had just leaned over and kissed me was, that was huge to me. You know, that was the greatest moment of my life up until that point. And, uh, you know, I, I was like, hey, well, let's hang out a couple more times before I leave, because I wasn't leaving for like another week or so. And we hung out a few more times, and we fooled around in her mom's uh, downstairs living room a, a little bit. And, you know, my plans for going in the army changed because this was, she was quite literally my dream girl. You know, not figuratively speaking, she was quite literally my dream girl. So I'd be damned if I was going to walk away from that. You know, I didn't care where it led me, I was going to walk down that path. I can't remember where this comes out. So anyway, we we saw each other several times. I went in the army, went to basic training. We wrote, she wrote me. I got a letter from her almost every day. I had pictures of her up in my locker. And uh, she came to my basic training graduation in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. And then I went to uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina for AIT, and she came to my AIT graduation, and because my reserve unit, you know, I had a reserve, I picked a reserve unit in Pennsylvania because, you know, it was a reserve, I needed some place to live, so I lived with my parents. And, uh, you know, she, she came with my parents to pick me up in South Carolina at Fort Jackson, and rode back to Pennsylvania with me, and we dated. She graduated college and uh, picked out a grad school. Meanwhile, I was starting to, uh, I had started my career as a mechanic. She picked out her grad school, which was Emerson in Boston, and was like, well, I'm moving to Boston. I'm like, well, I'm moving to Boston too. So we packed up everything we owned 
and to the back of my 80, I think it was an 86 Scirocco? It was whatever year Scirocco, VW Scirocco, that had the single wiper in the middle of the windshield. But we packed everything we owned into that car and uh, off we went. And the car had a, had a leaky water pump, so with everything we owned in it, we had to stop every, uh, probably every hour, let the car cool down and put more water in. It was funny. You know, it was one of those things, it's like it's an adventure because you're, you know, 22. If you're 32 and you're doing that, it would just suck dick. Uh, I think I go straight here. Yes. Lived in Boston for a long time, had, you know, did the whole shitty little apartment thing. Oh, I know where I need to turn. I eventually uh, got cancer. That's a whole, that's subject for a whole nother vlog. Hope that's still aimed right. I eventually got cancer and that's a subject for a whole other vlog. Um, the nice thing about living in Bo getting cancer living in Boston is you have Dana Farber and Brigham and Women's right there. And Dana Farber is one of the best cancer treatment places in the country. Brigham is one of the best surgical centers in the country. Um, so I had I had excellent treatment. Three rounds of chemo, one surgery later. You know I'm cancer free going on shit at this point. 12, 14 years. Um, and after a while, we were just like, we got so tired of explaining why we weren't married, which was basically that we were both like, and I guess it was a little bit of a kind of like still rebellious punk rock nature to us. We were like, marriage is just a paper, man. <laughs> For lack of a better way to put it. We're just like, we don't need your paper to tell us that we're in love, man. We probably should have taken that attitude and gone and occupied something. I don't know. But, uh... So we got married, and we went, we went to Estes Park, Colorado to get married. That was awesome. We go back there. Now we're going back almost every year. We're going there this year. Um... So that's, and at this point, I have known my wife for just about 25 years. I've been together with her for about 20 years now, and we're coming up on our 10th wedding anniversary this year. So that's kind of, that's the deal and the story with how I met my wife.